Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 um, of the inflatable sailing kayak kit build. Um, so we have been uh, sailing with the ETV2 inflatable kayak from Decathlon. Uh, for those who just beginning to, well, if you this is your first time watching this series of videos, we have five previous episodes that uh, we begin from uh, building this first sail, with, which doesn't really went very well, but it sailed anyway downwind. Um, wasn't proud of it, but it was a good find and good fun. And uh, we learned a lot from the first episode. Um, so if you haven't seen it, it's good for you to just watch from the beginning. If you're going to build your own kit, especially when you're going to design and build your own kit, you should watch from the beginning because it will give you more uh, ideas and insights on uh, what works and what wouldn't work and what might work. So especially if you are quite a technically sound person, I think it will help you very, very much. So. Um, from the last video, uh, the last sail out that you saw on episode 5, uh, we sailed 5 or 4? Five, 5, I think. We are going to do it all, all in one take. I'm not going to do this too many times. So, from the last video, we used this. For those who ask me, how do you actually mount the rudder, which is the fin, which is pretty much the steering wheel of the kayak or a sailboat, to the inflatable kayak, which is a balloon basically, you don't have a transom, you don't have a board, you don't have like a stiff surface, a stiff plate for you to um, hold the rudder uh, or mount the rudder or hang it to make it stiff enough to hold it in place so that you can have good turning power, turning power, steering power. So what I did was I bought this piece uh, from BNQ for those who are from the UK or around the UK. Um, BNQ is like a Home Depot equivalent to Home Depot in the US. Um, this is called a black UBVC end stop. So it has been deformed on purpose using a heat gun. Intense heat, this one. I was hitting it, hitting it a lot. And then I bent it into place, into shape like this, so that it will, it will just hug the nose, the, the tail of the kayak rather, uh, the tail of the kayak so that it just holds it in place like that. And then you have two holes on each side, which I tied to the, um, if you have an Itiwit kayak from Decathlon, um, you will see like there's like a bungee sling. They are like eyelets that you can actually use this to mount to those eyelets. Uh, that's why I did. And these two bottom ones was tied straight to the, uh, what you call it, the scat mounts under the kayak itself. So it worked okay. I wouldn't say it's bad, but I noticed in, in more aggressive maneuvers or higher winds, I feel like it's like you're driving a car with a loose steering wheel. Um, you just imagine if you're driving Formula One, you're driving fast or okay, fine, a sports car. Uh, you're not going very fast in the kayak, but a sports car. And you have a loose steering wheel. How are you gonna maneuver and make full full use of the force of the wind that's coming through the, the sail? So um, in that sense, I thought that this can be used, but mm, it's not very good so i come up with a new solution which i was thinking about for a long long time i use a bucket like this is three gallons or 14 liters one four 14 liters so we're going to use this as a material as a base material you can easily find this from um bnq or uh, hardware stores it's actually made to hold water, cement, sand, whatever, pretty much, whatever you can throw at it. Um, I sometimes, well, when you're lazy to get leather, that's why I do. I flip this over and step on it. It still stands, it doesn't break. So it should stand the force of the rudder. So that's what I did. So what I did was, 
as you can see this is the bucket the bucket has been chopped in pieces three ways the butt splice it in the middle which i'm going to explain more and then rejointed with this this is a wood burning tool which you have many inserts for it the inserts are the insert the tips sorry the tips you have many tips like this you have uh, v-shaped tips like that you also have sharp tips like that like a pencil and also a flat one i use this the most the flat ones if you have done electronic works before um, if you have done uh, soldering on a circuit board it's pretty much the same thing except for this one was so uh, purpose purpose made purposely made for um, burning wood wood surface as an art so instead I used it because I know if you can burn wood with this you definitely can burn plastic with it the only problem is you need to get good ventilation while you're working on plastics to burn with this because the fumes is not they're not very good for your health um, it's known to cause cancer as well disclaimer if you want to do this if you have health problems try to avoid it or do it outdoors at least do me a favor please okay okay now let's have a look at the whole rudder mounting unit so as you can see you have the transom the plastic transom that i've built from the bucket you have the rudder from the previous build still standing it didn't break or chip or anything i just did a little bit of touch up of the of the coating that's all and you have the tiller which is made out of a fishing rod and you have the walking stick if you were to um, watch uh, videos of uh, laser series sailboats uh, laser pico laser anything um, they would have like a tiller stick and then they have an extension they call it walking stick i don't know why they call it walking stick maybe it's like for someone to well it's similar to those you know people use for hiking so let's take this apart so that you have a better look a better idea of how it actually look like part by part I tied it together it's actually easier for me to like store it away okay there now you have this is your good old bucket these strings that you see here these are all um, mounting mounting points that well mounting um, strings that you're gonna tie down to the kayak body so these two clips I even got myself a small mini carabiner like that. Okay, so these two are going to be clipped on to the kayak's body, where the uh, what you call it, the bungee cords is. Uh, so you clip it on, and this works like a like a ratchet. You can tighten it so that make it tighter. So that you hold this better it won't slide off this one can't remember what this knot is called but it's like a stopper knot see it stops by itself it has a lot of vibration from its own body so this is two slings there's two more down here that goes to the transom oh no no sorry not transom going to the skeg skeg mounts to the fins under the under the kayak itself so this two goes under this two goes over and this one is going to be sling to the boom to the boom 
the sale, the sales boom. This one is going to the sales boom. So that's about it. It's really simple. So what I did was, as you can see, this bucket here, step one, I chopped the bottom bit off. You can use a saw, you can use a, um, I don't know, a hacksaw. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a wood saw, but you can use a wood saw if you don't have any other choice. Um, I also have a multi-tool saw, multi-tool. Um, you can also use a jigsaw if you don't have enough other, other tools. Anything you can use that cuts, but just don't cut your own hands or your own body parts. Be very careful with hand tools or power tools. So you can chop this with even a grinder. I love to use a grinder, but grinder is a little bit too noisy and dusty to use indoors. So you might want to use a hacksaw instead. So chop this off. Step one, chop that off. Step two, slice right in the middle. Make sure you draw a line so that you have a guide where you are cutting so that you won't miss. Just cut it straight down. It won't matter if you don't get it straight for this one. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you have to inflate the inflatable kayak first. Press this body in on itself like that. And then mark, chop it down the middle. It becomes like this. Look at the patterns. Can you see the resemblance? And then this, when it's already like in a conical shape, mount it on the kayak. Well, not mount it on the kayak. Just prop it over the on the kayak body, and then draw another imaginary line. Well, not draw an imaginary line. You have to estimate how much you want to cut. Make sure it's flat. You see that that's 90 degrees there. Eh? 90 degrees. Cut that nose off. Make it flat. And then, with that bottle that you had from earlier, flip it around and mount it there. Okay? So the plastic joints are basically only two parts. This part and this part. No matter which way you want to mount it, where, which way you want to solder it or weld it, it's still the same concept. You just press the two plastics together, melt both sides and mix the plastic. It's stronger than glue. It's even stronger than two-part epoxy. I would, I would say I would back, back my life on it because plastics versus plastics have a better joint because it's from the same material. But if you put glue on plastic, it will still float on the surface. It relies on friction between the glue surface and the plastic surface. Okay. We will demonstrate how we do the welding. So you can also add webs inside. Web is basically, if you have an angle like that, you want to add another piece like that, like a triangle piece, it's called a web. And you can weld that one as well. But I didn't do it for this one. I'm very pretty confident this one is very strong. I even filled it up with water to see if it holds water. So there's no leaks, so I'm good. And this hole here in the bottom is actually for the drain drain cap that you have originally on the ETV kayak. So it doesn't matter if you have ETV1, ETV2, see, ETV3 seater is the same, same body. So this actually works for ETV1, 2, and 3. But well, for sailing, I would, I would generally recommend ETV2 or 3 because the body is longer, you have more space to sit, you have more space to put the sail, and you can use a bigger sail. You can use uh, the same size of a sail on ETV1, but the sail is going to be tiny or you can have a big sail and take over because it's overpowering. Okay, so now on to this part. 
as you can see it's the same 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 metal part that we use pretty much the same stuff these metal pieces i actually got it from i think it was a an old window um in windows back set from a UPVC window back set you can also use aluminium if you can go to a hardware store you can ask them aluminium plates like this uh, thickness is two millimeters i'm gonna put all of this on the website just in case you want to uh, take notes of it or want to have it as reference um, i will take detailed photos as well and um, sizes of screws what i use uh, so that you can construct the same if you like or you can improvise if you want um for for what i use this is this is called a pintle and gadget system pintle is a pintle it's like a pin pin pintle pin gadget is basically a hole that you thread through so you have a pintle let me make this stand I put it like this, thread this through from the top, down, 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 perfect, it fell into place. So I even have, um, so I have pintle, gudgeon, and I also have gudgeon on this side. This, this is actually a piece of chopping board that I use to make it raise off. Otherwise, you'll be rubbing on the transom. You don't want that because your transom is going to wear out and it's going to cause a hole and it, it weakens the structure, so it's no good. And this gudgeons that I have here is made of, well, it's actually a door bolt. A door bolt that you lock your door. Old houses usually have a door bolt. So you have a door bolt that I chop in pieces, it becomes a gadget. One, two, and three pieces. And these pieces are some leftovers, uh, aluminiums that you know I, I found from golf cart from the previous, previous projects. And this is mounted over like that. This is one piece of a fishing rod, a bigger fishing rod going, a smaller fishing rod going to the bigger fishing rod, held down by this screw. And this, there. Let me demonstrate how the walking stick works. Okay, so this walking stick actually works when you have to sit far forward in the kayak so that you can control from afar, like that. I purposely make it longer because I don't know how how long do I need this um, pillar and the walking stick to be. So I just left it as long like this first for now. And then I'll trim it down a little bit when we get on the water for real. So yeah, that's about it. Simple build. You just have to keep it simple. Don't make it too complicated. You want to make it simple, functional. That's it. If it's no good, remove it and rebuild, not add on. Don't add it on. So it looks too messy. Number one, it's going to be hard for you to assemble. One And second one, you're going to be like going around in circles and you end up losing up, losing interest on your build. And also, I've also added this, this, uh, this pin to lock the rudder in place. I also put a, a fishing line on it like that so that you don't lose it when you're sailing it when you when you're out sailing so this rudder can be raised like that and locked in place like that so if you are going on shallow waters you're going into shallow waters or getting back to shore or you're parking it on the beach this rudder doesn't have to be on the ground doesn't have to be on the beach, on the pebbles, on the rocks, so that you get scratch and damage um, that will cause uh, water damages later. So I made it this way, and use this pin and lock it back in place. There you go. 
Rather system. Okay, we are back uh, at our lab. Well, our small lab, mini laboratory that I've already preheated this uh, our uh, plastic welding tool, uh, wood wood burning tool. It's the same stuff. I've I, we are using two tips today. We are using one of these, the flat ones, and also one of these uh, like pencil like uh, tip. So one to to make it uh, stick very well like a web, and this one to smooth the surface so that it becomes uh, look more presentable. So as I've been mentioning before, the door bolt that I was mentioning before was uh, I think you you can tell pretty much by the way it looks. Uh, if you were to buy one of these, uh, you probably can make I don't know maybe four, maybe a, like two to three sets of gudgeons from this. But you probably need um, another pin. I bought this. I think it was like five or six pounds uh, in uh, British pounds uh, currency, or I think in American dollars. You probably get it under a little bit under ten dollars. Probably under ten dollars. Um, so yeah, um, you can get this from BNQ, Home Depot, or like in the UK we also use Screwfix. I'm I'm a big fan of Screwfix. Screwfix, uh, they have lots of stuff in stock. Anyways, so either this or the tip end also can be used. So when the door meets, then the pin runs through, and you can the door can open so this is the same stuff that I use I was trying to look for something that won't rust so this is perfect this is uh, aluminum aluminum doesn't rust um, and it lasts fairly a long time a fairly long time so now um, let's go straight to doing some plastic welding so I've got some scrap bits of plastic here um, like bits of plastic uh, like this that I've chopped off from the, from the previous project um, from the previous uh, soldering job that I did for that uh, rudder unit so what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder these these pieces together um, you can see these cut, cut edges are rough we're going to joint it something like that or whichever way that it meets nicer I'm not gonna cut it or anything. I'm just gonna practice welding and show you how I actually solder it together. So, in like like in the last uh, segment of this video, um, I did mention that you only have two welds. You only have the straight down weld and the crown. So either the straight down weld or the crown. So we're gonna do one butt joint like this. And the other one's gonna be like 90 degree angle like that. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first one. Um, let's do a butt joint first, like that. I think this is a better view for you to see. So match it like that. Match it. Okay. Now I'm gonna use this solder. For this purpose of this recording of this video, it's going to be too loud for me to run the extraction fan on the kitchen, the kitchen cooker. Um, it's going to be too loud that you can you can actually well hear anything what I'm trying to explain. So I'm just going to switch it off. But please have uh, uh, some common sense about working with plastic. Like I said, the fumes that are released from plastic will be harmful for your health. So we're going to go ahead and solder. What I'm going to do is, if you can look closer, I'm going to go one, two, three, like like a stitch, like how you stitch fabric. It's the same. What you're doing is you're pulling this, this plastic towards into this plastic on the right and this right, plas right piece of plastic into the left. So it's like a cross, crisscross stitch like that. And then we're going to smooth it out. So I'm going to do left to right first. You can see smoke coming out now. Be patient. 
take as long as you need. You don't have to rush. And be careful not to burn your fingers because this iron is hot. Also, when you cut your plastic, make sure it matches, it meets a uh, butt joint. That means it must be straight on both sides so that it matches. So I'm not now I'm gonna let go the one on the right. See there, it hangs, and you can continue. You can also do this. You can tack this end, tack, tack here, and tack the other end. So that it hangs and then you can continue without even holding it. Look at that. There. Okay, now both plastics are it's a little bit soft still because it's still hot. So now how do I replace this tip without burning my hands? I can't be using my hands to like twist it out. So I'm going to use a plier. Twist it bit by bit. Grip and let go like that. Don't drop it on your plastic piece that you're working on because it's hot so it's going to melt. So if you can see, I'm going to put it right there. I don't want to drop it in there either. Okay, and then, this is still cold so I'm just going to screw it on first a little bit before it gets hot. Okay, it gets warm now, warmer, warmer. Oh, okay, it gets too hot now. So you can see, we didn't like three four seconds it heats up you might not be able to touch it anymore you can use a glove if you want um, you have leather gloves you can so what we're gonna do with this one is uh, we're gonna use this flat tip to um, match and smoothen the surface ideally you want to do it both sides I'm gonna do this side and finish it over the other side as well so this one, you can do it like a circular motion. I'm doing like a wiping, wiping motion like that. So I get an even, even uh, surface, even finish. And also you can actually cheat. Say if your cut isn't that straight or you know you have holes in the joint what you can do is you can shave some bits of plastic like this there some bits of plastic you can leave it on there say on the hole take that bits off you see those chips are very very good for filling holes so you put it there and have this flat blade flat tip and go melt it on what it does is it will melt into the cavities and it will form a good bond plus it will cover the imperfections there okay so you have that side as well Another method is I also do dabbing it like this. Just melt it in like spots like that, like spot welding. Once it's already roughly flat, what you do is you rub it down like that. Just like applying a paste. There. Ideally, you want to cool it down um, in room temperature, whatever your room temperature is. 
don't run it under cold water because sudden cold water will actually crack the joint so you don't want that but if it ever cracks now you know how to fix it there strong if i can carry this on that that is strong there there you go doesn't fall so you have two pieces of plastic now joined into one cool okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna snap this off while it's still warm okay we're gonna join it 90 degrees like that okay this is for your butt joint on the butt of the pail going onto your nose cone of the the what you call it the uh, transom so you can use a flat tip as well so i'm going to demonstrate with a flat tip you can use your sharp tip your pencil tip and go like that if you want and then smooth or you can also do this dab it dab it in okay see i'm taking it one by one Take it two, take it three, take it four, hold it for a second, for a minute, well, probably ten seconds, blow it a little bit, cool it down, there you go, that's almost a 90 degree join, so all you have to do is continue, continue, every single millimeter of the joint like that it's not very hard it's easy there you go and then smooth angle the tape and rub it along Okay, there you go. Almost a angle joint. So all you have to do is smooth it out. And if you have a rasp or a file, you can file it off and then join it more. Um, it's totally up to you. You can fix it. You can do it. You can do on both sides. You can do on one side. You can add a web. Like I said before, you can add another web here. You have um, like a 90 degree joint. You can add a web like that and also joint it like that. Take it. So it becomes stronger. There you go. Okay, so this is how I mount the the rudder transom. The rudder mount to the body. You have one rope tied straight there the carabiner and then this works as a like a like a friction knot that ties onto itself so I can adjust how much tension you want to put on here and the other one as well you have one two and the third one underneath it goes straight to the so everything have a friction stop or not that's about it so you also have the You also have this walking stick which allows access from far which is a golf stick as long as it works
hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, so this plastic jointing technique don't only work for making our rudder uh, transom. Uh, you can use it for many other things. If you have any broken plastics that you want to fix that you know um, that is hard to find, uh, you can also use the same technique that I've uh, shown you. Um, so just don't forget to subscribe and uh, write in your comments. I would like to know what you think about the current this this video and what you have learned maybe something i've missed maybe something you like to know in detail how to do it how to get it done you can write it into the comments and uh, even send us email or um, comment in our uh, our instagram or send our, us a dm on instagram as well um, go to snacks in the backpack.com snacks in the backpack.com spells in full so uh, go to snacks in the backpack.com and uh, write in your comments and also you can also uh, have a look at the website uh, we have our blog um, I might want to post it sometime soon probably after right after this video you're gonna have all the details all the um, parts list and probably detailed photos um, probably we're gonna have a better day that we can check, take pictures of the the sail on mounted onto the kayak on a sunny day I'll put it outside uh, hopefully sometime soon so that you have an idea of how it works how how you can improve how can uh, we can build a better better functioning system um, so I hope you enjoyed it uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, don't forget to comment and stay tuned we have more videos coming hopefully this spring summer we have more sailing videos upcoming take care stay warm stay safe